Hello everyone, I'm the Enforcer and welcome to the breaking news. Today's breaking news is that at the Zaporizhzhia nuclear power plant, another drone has ended up colliding and exploding on the reactor housing of one of the six reactors at the Zaporizhzhia nuclear power plant and has apparently caused a large amount of alarm. We have been able to get a statement from the IAEA, the International Agency for Atomic Energy, or the International Atomic Energy Agency, and we've been able to hear that according to their initial statement, there is no damage or human casualties that were involved in this attack, but that was immediately followed by a statement saying that inspectors were not allowed to access the site and see the damage for themselves, leading us to believe that the IAEA is most likely taking the statements from the Russians at face value and have absolutely no real evidence of their own to be able to state that there was a lack of damage or human casualties caused at the nuclear power plant. The Zaporizhzhia nuclear power plant has been hit nearly three times before this by separate drones or separate munitions that have ended up hitting the reactor shells and causing some damage. We have been able to see proof of this in the past of a picture of a small hole being created in the roof, possibly by a drone explosive. But nevertheless, this is showing once again that the Zaporizhzhia nuclear power plant is in an incredibly dangerous and precarious situation, and it appears that there is no efforts at all at the moment to try and bring the situation around the Zaporizhzhia nuclear power power plant into a far more stable condition. This has led us to believe that the Russians may be possibly behind this attack as we're starting to hear that once again they are downplaying the severity of the damage that has been caused to the power plant and once again they're not coming out and blaming the Ukrainians either. This may be showing that a Russian drone attempted to fly past a nuclear power plant on its way towards the area of Nikopol or the other side of the Dnipro River ended up being jammed by an electronic warfare system in the area and may have ended up colliding and exploding with the side of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. While that is an incredibly detailed scenario and probably highly unlikely due to the high de level of fidelity that this hypothetical scenario lies within, it is not entirely out of the question that accidents could be leading to these explosions on the reactor housing. Nevertheless, these explosions are happening directly on the reactor housing of active nuclear reactors that have been active for quite some time and have been in very dangerous situations just over the prior weeks. This is once again showing that the world needs to start paying a lot more attention to what's happening at the Zaporizhzhia nuclear power plant and bring it into a far more secure situation, at least around the power plant. Maybe create a safe zone around it or something along those lines. Meanwhile, we've been hearing that while the Russians appear to possibly be ending up causing more damage to the Zaporizhzhia nuclear power plant uh, by accident or on purpose, we have been hearing that the Ukrainians are planning on causing damage inside of Russia well into the foreseeable future, with the raw intent of doing so. We've been able to get a statement today that Ukraine apparently now possesses super drones that can reach targets 3,000 kilometers inside of Russia, which is approximately 24 to 2,200 miles inside of the Russian Federation. This information is shocking, as the farthest attack that we've ever seen happen inside of Russia was at a, inch, uh, was at a very far range of 750 miles at the town of Nabarezhny Chelny, just about 150 miles away, 125 miles away from the city of Kazan. We just saw that last night an attack also occurred on the Russian bomber factory on the northeastern end of the city of Kazan as well, another 625 miles inside of Russia. Going off of this, it appears that the Ukrainians are attempting to try and destroy the Russians' critical infrastructure before the Russians can do the same to them, thus bringing the Russian government to its knees in the negotiating table before the Ukrainians have the same done to them by the never-ending Russian air attacks that are now hitting critical infrastructure throughout all of Ukraine, such as the thermal power plants as well as other critical infrastructure that lies within the boundaries and the borders of Ukraine. Something interesting to note about that is that as long as one side is able to give more air defense than the other, they will be able to most likely stave off a lot of the damage from these critical infrastructure attacks and probably end up winning the war just for the fact of outlasting or outsurviving the other side's ability to wage war and keep it running. This is why President Volodymyr Zelensky has been so adamant about the provision of air defense systems from the West to Ukraine, because without the provision of those air defense systems, Ukraine may actually be brought to the negotiating table and to their knees before the Russians are brought to their knees. And this is why Zelensky has been asking for air defense systems before everything else at this point. As long as the Ukrainians can defend their skies from incoming attacks, they will be able to outlast the Russians and continue to attack critical infrastructure inside of Russia and and then bring the Russians to the negotiating table and end up most likely winning the war because of the treaty that would follow. 
That is why it is so important that air defense systems continue to come into Ukraine, well, into Ukraine, and that's also why President Zelensky continues to make trips around Europe. And we've been able to hear that apparently the Russians are getting a very active spy network inside of the European Union that is either attempting to assassinate Zelensky on these trips to request more aid, or to even try and curb the amount of aid that Ukraine is getting because of the disinformation campaigns that they keep up inside of Europe. We were able to hear last night while we were live on air that two Germans were arrested inside of Germany, supposedly for conducting actions in support of the Russian state, and just today we heard that a possible assassin was arrested inside of Poland by the Polish government and apparently had been in coordination with the Russian government or the Russian Federation in a plot to assassinate the Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky. We don't know the exact details about how that assassination would have unfolded if the plan had gone forward, but it is showing that the Russians are seriously trying to curb or completely stop the support of any kind of weapon systems, especially air defense, to Ukraine. But it appears that those efforts may have been thwarted. As we got a statement today from NATO in general that six additional Patriot systems may be provided from NATO partners to Ukraine in support of their air defense. On top of the Patriot system that is already being given to Ukraine, which was stated by Germany yesterday, this means that Ukraine may be, have just gotten the golden ticket as far as their defense will go and winning the war will uh, unfold from here forward. The provision of the seven Patriots, including the German one from yesterday, means that Ukraine will have all of the Patriot systems that they asked for. The Ukrainian, well, President Zelensky has been making it explicitly clear that seven additional Patriot systems would defend the skies of Ukraine so well they would never need another Patriot system. They would just need a never-ending supply of ammo beyond that point, um, given the rate of consumption that they most likely have. Going off of that, it appears that if those additional seven Patriots are provided, the one from Germany and the six from the rest of NATO, the Ukraine will be able to get the air defense they need to be able to outlast longer than the Russians and end up winning the war. This is something that is huge. I cannot overstate enough how huge this is because this means that the Ukrainians will actually have an incredibly large chance of winning this conflict outright and most likely being able to push the Russians out of Ukraine or at least regain a large amount of their territory, possibly including Crimea as well. Moving on from that and into the Iran-Israel conflict, which has been going on for six days now, although it's starting to get down to a light simmer, we can see that this conflict has now once again entered the diplomatic phase and will most likely be moving towards the combat or action phase here after April 30th, which is the end of Passover. According to information that we were able to get today, however, it does appear that the Iranians are trying to keep up a low volume of attacks from their terrorist forces Hamas and Hezbollah, as we did hear that alarms sounded over northern Israel, because of a drone attack that was coming in from the area of southern Lebanon from Hezbollah. We don't really know the status of that attack, how many of those air targets were shot down, most likely all of them, but still showing once again that there is a small amount of action, but it is largely entered a diplomatic phase at this point as we see they're moving on towards the next action phase. Meanwhile, inside of Iran, we were able to hear that the Iranians are apparently reconsidering their nuclear deterrence policy as a response to some Israeli officials claiming that Israel should target the sites and facilities of the Iranian nuclear program in retaliation for last Saturday's large-scale large attack by Iran. This is an incredibly interesting statement by the Iranians because it's suggesting that they have a nuclear weapon that is already usable. This may be a bluff or this may actually be a true statement by the Islamic Republic of Iran, but nevertheless, incredibly concerning to hear that they're starting to reconsider its nuclear deterrence policy considering that from what we know on the public level, they shouldn't even have a nuclear weapon to be able to speak about a nuclear deterrence at all. We'll be looking into that as much as we can in the future, but that is, of course, a very concerning statement in its own right. Meanwhile, while we're talking about the diplomatic phase, it does appear that quietly behind the scenes, Israeli diplomats may be talking to other nations in the region and possibly trying to vie them for support in their attack against Iran that will be happening after April 30th. This may also be the reason why the Israelis are going to be waiting until after Passover is because they're actually spending the time to try and form a regional coalition to strike against Iran with instead of striking against it single-handedly. The reason why we're believing that the Israelis may be trying to create a coalition is that we saw that the Saudi Arabians and the United Arab Emirates made statements today 
that are leading us to believe that they are possibly considering joining this coalition against Iran if they are able to possibly get some sort of security assurances from the United States, which we were able to hear today, according to Fitux News, which republished a statement that was given to Khan. UAE and Saudi officials conveyed a message to the United States that if you want our role in the regional security alliance to increase, we want U.S. guarantees for our security, as Israel has received. This is showing us that apparently... There has been some kind of a talk in the background, maybe in between Israeli diplomats, the Saudis, and the UAE, about having them involved in a coalition. Because we can see that they are saying, if you want our role in regional security to to increase, possibly showing that they're expected to take action against Iran here in the near future, they would then want U.S. guarantees for security, most likely U.S. provisions of air force and ground air defense, so that way they can defend the skies of Saudi Arabia and the UAE, much like the skies over Israel were defended by coalition forces just days ago. This is possibly showing that here in the next few weeks, in the next two weeks really, when the Israeli attack does happen, it may not just be an Israeli attack, it may actually be a coalition attack of nations in the region, including Israel, Saudi Arabia, the UAE, and others, that will all be attacking Iran in concert. It may be that the Iranians actually have no way to respond to such a large attack, considering that all three of these countries are largely equipped with modern Western systems. It may be that they are overwhelmed and they actually have a large amount of their military sites destroyed, or at least the Israelis are the ones spearheading the attack, and the other countries in the region are in full support of the Israeli and Western actions that are taken against Iran and the Russian Federation. But nevertheless, that is all of the major news that we have for the moment out of the Middle East, and that's also all the major news that we have from Ukraine at the moment. I thank everyone so much once again for watching. If y'all did enjoy, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and support us on Patreon. Link in the description below. It helps us to keep this channel running, and I have to give a huge shout-out to all of our patrons who are helping to make this channel possible. I also have to say that make sure to join us at 10 p.m. Eastern Time tonight as we will most likely have additional information about what happened at the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant today because, of course, with the lack of IAEA officials on the ground being able to inspect the damage that was apparently caused by a drone explosion on the reactor housing today, we really do not know what has happened there. The IAEA is saying that it's no point of concern, but we know in the past that those statements can be taken as untrue because they'll say that something is of no concern and then come out months later and say that it was a dire situation. Situation. We will be seeing if we can find some more information on that tonight. Uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't bank on it. We may not be able to find something, but make sure to stay tuned tonight to our live stream because we will be talking about the updates that we may be able to get there later. And so with that, thank you all so much once again, and I will see you all on the next one.